All I can remember is like, I need to get back into this firefight. Why, why am I on my back? I don't understand. I was crawling around trying to get my rifle back into the correct firing position. That I realized that I lost my left arm, that it's just severed, that it's gone. My name is Jacob Van Gass, and I was on my second tour to Afghanistan in 2009 with the parachute regiment when I was hit by a rocket propelled grenade. I lost my left arm, part of my left leg, and suffered a number of internal injuries that changed my life forever. But I have refused to let my disability define who I am. I was born in South Africa and I grew up there. Anyone from the Commonwealth nations can actually join the British military. And when I found that out, I just had that feeling of, I need to follow my dream. So I sold everything I had, used that money to buy a plane ticket to the UK. I landed on the weekend on a Saturday and that Monday morning I was in the careers office. I trained hard to make the, the cuts to get to join the, the parachute regiment. Second time going to Afghanistan, feeling that heat, the dust in your lungs, it was welcoming. And I, I was like, yeah, this is what I do, this is where I belong, and I loved every bit of it. It was the, the morning of the 19th of August, 2009. Some very, very good information came our way about an IED facilitator. And we were after this guy for a very long time. That night I was attached to a sniper, and between us, we carried this set of ladders, and we attached them to a backpack. And between me and him, we would take chances of carrying these letters. We did our mission, we got the suicide bombers, we got the vest, we got the facilitator, the guy that makes them. We started heading out into the desert to where the helicopters were gonna pick us up. And I think about 25 minutes into this walk, a call came over to the radio saying that the pilot wasn't happy with the landing site. But from our current location, we then had to move into an unknown area to the new pickup point. And about 15 minutes in, we spotted some movement on the high ground. And then suddenly one of them opened up with a spray of AK-47 in our general direction. We started receiving fire from different firing locations, which kind of took us a little bit by surprise, but we then engaged with them as well. And suddenly the firefight started growing bigger and bigger and bigger. There was a Taliban training camp that we almost like walked straight into. Two RPGs was fired from my left flank and it was the second one was kind of bouncing and ricocheting off the ground. I kind of just saw this red glow in the side of my night vision goggles. I kind of just turned my back to this oncoming rocket. Luckily for me, part of the impact was taken up by those ladders. And I think if I didn't have that on my back, I probably would have been killed. I remember very clearly moaning about my leg a lot. Um, my ankle specifically, and I was constantly asking the medic, have I got my leg, have I got my leg? Why is it so painful? And it's like, you've got your legs. We need to really work on this arm and stop the bleeding. And it's once I was on that helicopter, I was like, okay, I'm safe, but more so everyone else is safe. I can kind of relax now. I woke up six days later in Celiac Hospital. I had about a pint, probably even a little bit less of blood left in me. And I remember one of my friends actually seeing he kind of peered through the window and he said the one moment I remember clearly was they just cut you from, you know, from the, the bottom of your chest all the way to your belly button and they were just like taking your internal organs and putting it on the side because I had shrapnel wounds to my left side and I had to go through it to see what's been injured to then fix it. And he walked out to get a bit of fresh air and I think a nurse wasn't far behind him and she came out as well and he said, excuse me, she's, he's like, Jack, it must be, that's, that's him done. Like, what are they doing to him? And she's like, in the calmest voice ever, no, he's okay, he's a fighter. I've made such good friends, I've traveled the world, I've, I've done everything I wanted with the army and I felt that there was so much more. But then I realized that this, that's what's not gonna be. Life is gonna look a lot different and I didn't know what it might look like at the time, but I always saw that as a new challenge. Let's go and see what we can and can't do. I think I've climbed four of the seven highest mountains in the world. And then yes, my interest then fell into cycling and we've really pushed on with the cycling. It was announced that we were gonna be hosting the inaugural Invictus Games in London. Not was it just the first time something like this was gonna happen. It was also a very, very good opportunity for myself to kind of get into a games environment, performing in 
in in the big stadiums two gold medals one in the road race and one at the time trial it was just unbelievable the tokyo games for me is, is definitely one of my highlights china was up and they broke a world record in the qualifying round and i think everyone even some of our coaches ridden us off going you're going to win a silver i was like how can you write us off before we even go for the final ride and we sat down as a team and we all knew what we needed to do and it was the right moment, the right time, the right place. And we all, it just clicked. And we beat China in that final. And we broke their record that they've just set a few minutes ago. We beat it again and bettered it. And we came away with the gold. For me, there's a great deal of, of pride when I can put that flag on my shoulder again and represent Great Britain. I have no regrets whatsoever joining the military uh, as a Commonwealth soldier. I had a great time in battalion and I had a great time on my tour. It was everything that I was hoping it to be. I miss days in service every single day. The role military charities have played in my life is hugely significant and I can only be grateful for them that they are there and for the service that they do provide. I don't think there's much more I can say than just a huge thank you to everyone that plays the lottery and a request of keep playing. It really is life changing and it, it really makes a difference. If you want to help veterans like me, please play the Veterans Lottery.